At Auburn, the Tiger Walk is an established part of the free game ritual. But on December 2nd, 1989, it was like no other. These players, coaches, and fans all were part of history in the making. Every footstep brought them closer to realizing a dream Auburn people had shared for many years, to bring the Alabama game here to the campus of Auburn University. Now, that day had arrived, and like any dream, it was hard to believe and impossible to describe. But it had finally happened. Alabama at Auburn, the first time ever. No one had ever seen anything like it. People were everywhere. At 8 a.m., the exits off Interstate 85 were already clogged. Game programs were sold out by 10.30. An hour before kickoff, the party was already going strong inside Jordan-Hare Stadium. Game pressure on the field was so thick you could cut it with a knife. For Alabama, a possible national championship hung in the balance. For Auburn, a share of their third straight SEC championship. That, plus the indescribable emotion surrounding this first ever meeting in Auburn, put this game on another level entirely. This year, it was for more than bragging rights. History was being made simply by playing at Jordan-Hare Stadium. Like a Super Bowl, the pregame hype had been enormous. But unlike Super Bowls, what people would witness across the nation today would be a true classic. But Alex moves over to the far side, takes it at the 5, to the 10, up the alley, 15, 20. He is really belted as he got the 30-yard line and fought his way out to the 33 or 34. The Tigers wasted little time getting settled, going for it all just three plays into the game. Reggie Slack needing five yards on third down. It's going to throw long to Alexander Wright. Oh, a great catch over the shoulder inside the 10, down to the seven-yard line as he beat Ephraim Thomas, who made the tackle down at the seven. Reggie Slack threw a beautiful pass, and Wright took it over his left shoulder as he raced down that eastern sideline. Reggie Slack came up to the line on a third and five. He saw that Alabama was playing man-to-man -man in the secondary. They were in a blitz situation. They had Keith McCants coming toward the quarterback. Auburn's offensive line needs the credit. Great pass by Reggie, great catch by Alexander, but the pass protection was there, allowed Reggie to get the ball off. 
A six-yard run by a healthy Stacy Danley took the Tigers to the goal line. All right, here's Auburn, third down and goal just inside. It's one full house backfield, two tight ends. Give up the middle, over and in as Joseph as he dives in. Touchdown, Auburn! James Joseph took the handoff from Reggie Slack and just went airborne, catapulting his way over the Alabama defenders and into the end zone. And Auburn has struck quickly with 12-10 left in the first quarter. The Tigers lead six to nothing. The scoring drive took seven plays and covered 68 yards in two minutes, 50 seconds, with James Joseph diving in from two yards out. The celebration, however, was short-lived. Slot formation to the left and on the draw, they give the ball to Williams and Williams has fumbled it and Alabama has recovered. Darrell Williams, a mix up on the exchange and the freshman from Pritchett, Alabama, coughed up the football. Alabama has it deep in Auburn territory. At the Auburn 21, an early gut check, a big test for the Auburn defense here. Just when things looked their worst, the defense responded, stopping the Crimson Tide in its tracks, forcing a field goal attempt. Ward is holding for him. This 19-yard attempt is on its way, a 29-yard kick, and it is good. Despite Alabama's ability to move the ball, the Tigers continue to frustrate the Tide's efforts to get into the end zone. Late in the first quarter, Alabama was again forced to go for the field goal. Doyle to kick and Ward holding for him, the ball on the near side hash mark. Angle back to the right, a 23 yard fake attempt. Rolling out as the holder, he's in a lot of trouble, throws a pass in the end zone, is it caught? No, broken up, incomplete. The holder, Jeff Wall, rolled out to his right, threw a pass in the end zone, broken up in there by Ogletree and Billingsley. David Lenore was the intended receiver, and Alabama has failed inside the Auburn five on four tries. It would take more than a fake field goal to fool the alert Auburn defenders, and the first quarter would end with Auburn holding a 7-3 edge. The Tide had defeated 10 teams, but they had not faced a disciplined defense like the Tigers. Alabama's frustration would continue on their first drive of the second quarter. Kevin Turner in the backfield, a play fake, rolling out and setting up, and unable to throw the ball, sacked is the quarterback Hollingsworth by Ricky Sutton. Hollingsworth pump faked and I thought he was going to throw it out in the flat, but Sutton all of a sudden was in his face, Charlie, and swarmed all over him for a big loss back to the Bama 44. Alabama three out of six on third down plays as Hollingsworth runs from the shotgun, gets a low snap, chased out of the pocket. Ogletree's got him. He is sacked back at his 42 yard line. Alabama was running from the shotgun. Auburn fired Ogletree and Craig sacked quarterback Hollingsworth. That's the third quarterback sack on Alabama. Hollingsworth losing yardage back to the 42 and Bama will have to punt as Bill Smith checks in. The Crimson Tide defense responded with a big play of its own that would prove costly to the Tigers. At the Bama 44, Slack, a short drop, and he throws, pass deflected up in the air, it's going to be intercepted by Alabama. Alabama making the interception, McCants, and he is muscled down at the 36-yard line, couldn't run with it as somebody deflected the pass at the line of scrimmage, got a hand on it, it was up for grabs right into McCants' hand. It was a fluke play, but in the history of this great rivalry, many games have been decided by just such a play. The Tide had capitalized on Auburn's first turnover. Now, a rejuvenated Alabama offense took the field. 
Gary Hollingsworth moved the tide down the field with a nice mix of short passes and rushing plays. It was the kind of frustrating ball control drive that had taken Alabama to a 10-0 record. The Auburn defense had played a brilliant first half, but this time, the Crimson Tide would not be denied. Classic is at the tail, turns it full, both ends are split away. Short drop by Hollingsworth, wants to throw over the middle, got a man wide open, 15 to the 10 to the 5, he's going in for the touchdown, Marco Battle. Hollingsworth connected with a wide open Marco Battle. Then the flanker darted past the Tiger defenders for Alabama's first touchdown. The Alabama scoring drive took 12 plays, covered 63 yards, and consumed 5 minutes and 29 seconds, capped by an 18-yard touchdown strike from Gary Hollingsworth to Marco Battle. The first half ended with Alabama up 10-7. Both teams had played with a spirit and determination that makes this annual clash one of the classic confrontations of college football. The halftime statistics reflected the closeness of the contest. Overall, the Crimson Tide held a slight edge with 11 first downs to Auburn's eight, and 185 yards total offense to Auburn's 149. Turnovers played a significant role in the first half, as two Tiger turnovers, one a fumble, and the other a Keith McCann's interception of a Reggie Slack pass, both led to Alabama scores. To begin the second half, Alabama pressed the advantage by throwing a curve at Auburn's defense. Alabama's going to go with the no huddle offense, another wrinkle that Alabama's trying to do. Here's the shotgun by Hollingsworth. He wants to throw this time, and he's got time, and he pump fakes, and he's chased out of the pocket. He throws on the run. The pass is caught by Battle at the 35, Battle's up to the 40, and on to the 43, close to a first down. By the time the Tigers finally stopped the Tide's advance, Alabama was in field goal range and was looking to add to its lead. Doyle, two out of three beyond 40 yards. This is a 48-yard try. Doyle, he's got the distance. It is just a little bit short. Just barely missed it. And Auburn has held Alabama by the skin of their teeth. Doyle kicked that one just a tad short. I thought it was going to be long enough off his foot, but it fell just under the crossbar, and it's no good, and Auburn takes over at its 31, first and 10. Having dodged a bullet, Auburn needed desperately to assert itself on offense and get this record crowd back in the game. Here's Slack. He's going to throw. He's got Washington open at midfield. 45, 40. Washington's in a foot race at the 30, the 25, the 20. Stumbles, tripped up, falls to the ground at the Alabama 10-yard line. Somebody grabbed him by a shoestring from behind. It was Keith McCants, the All-American linebacker, and he rambles 60 yards to the Alabama 10-yard line. McCants, the last man who had a chance at little Shane Wozden, who has figured so prominently in Auburn victories over LSU and Florida. That time, Wozden going for 60 yards. McCants just made a dive and grabbed an ankle. Still, it would not be easy getting into Alabama's end zone. A team does not go 10-0 without a tenacious defense. But James Joseph placed their backs against the wall with his 10-yard reception. Auburn inside the Bama two for a second down play. Joseph goes up and over. Joseph is in! Touchdown, Auburn! James Joseph has scored his second touchdown for the Auburn Tigers, who go ahead of the Alabama Crimson Tide with 10.36 remaining in the third quarter by the score of 13 to 10. Rob Selby and Brad Johnson simply collapsed the left side of the Alabama defense, enabling Joseph to fly untouched into the end zone. The scoring drive, six plays, 69 yards, and two minutes, 47 seconds, 
was capped off by the two-yard plunge by James Joseph, his second touchdown of the afternoon. Von Weil from his 30, kicks it, backpedaling Jelks, one yard deep in the end zone, is going to bring it out. 5, 10, 15, 20, and Jelks is swept off his feet at the 23-yard line by Alex Thomas. Jelks headed straight up this near boundary, and Thomas got over there and made the tackle at the 22-yard line, maybe the 23 or 4. We'll see exactly where they spot the ball, but it was a nice open field tackle against the speedy Gene Jelks by Alex Thomas, the sophomore from Dothan. It was obvious the intensity had moved up another notch. But Alabama continued to move the football. Crimson Tide quarterback Gary Hollingsworth consistently found the open man. Here comes the Crimson Tide up to the firing line with a new set of down. Hollingsworth will run from the shotgun formation. Auburn almost jumping offside. Four-man Tiger rush. Hollingsworth setting up with plenty of time, and he throws over the middle to a wide-open Kevin Turner. 35, 30. Turner still on his feet. Fumbles. Auburn's got it. They took it away from Turner, who lost the handle, left it on the ground, and it was Dennis Wallace who came up to make the recovery. And that's the first Alabama turnover of the game. And Auburn dodged the bullet because that was an excellent play. Hollingsworth to one of his favorite receivers, Kevin Turner. And Turner going upfield, finding the going pretty easy until he was really hit by one of the Auburn defenders coming in from the outside. I don't know who it was, but that jarred the ball loose. And that's a big break for Auburn. Again, turnovers are going to be the key to the ball game. Hard-hitting defense has always been a trademark of Pat Dye teams. Now it was time to cash in on this dividend. From the Tiger 26-yard line, a first down play for Slack. Reggie has an eye formation behind him, and he play fakes. He wants to pass. Sets up, has time, and he's going to air one out. Alexander Wright was pushed off the playing field, came back on the field, caught the ball at the 25 to the 20, and finally was cut down at the 15, 14-yard line. But they're going to say that he was pushed off the field of play. A penalty marker went down, and let's see what the ruling will be. I am reminded, I am reminded of the Auburn-Alabama game when Tom Gossam was pushed off the field of play, Charlie. Holding on the defense. Holding will be the call against Alabama, so the play will stand. A lot the of people, play stands and recount what happened, Charlie. A lot of people are curious when a defensive back pushes you out of bounds as number five, Ephraim Thomas, pushed Alexander Wright out of bounds. Can you come back in and make the catch? And the answer is yes. You can come back on the playing field and make the catch. The picture-perfect pass had gone 60 yards to the Alabama 14, but now it was the tide defense that stiffened as Reggie Slack faced a third and eight. Alexander Wright is in the slot to the wide side of the field. Joseph becomes a wing back. Here's Taylor come in motion to the football as rolling out of Slack. Slack's in a lot of trouble, may have to run. He will, he's at the 10, he's at the five, close to a first down, just inside the five. We'll see where they put knee on the ground. Slack was forced to run with the football, came up a little short, I believe. He's gonna be about a yard and a half short, Jim. Rayum made the tackle for Alabama. They put the ball nose in at the Bama 5. Auburn's got a decision to make. The screaming Auburn fans wanted the Tigers to go for a first and goal. But when these two rivals clash, every point can be crucial. Dickinson the holder, slight angle to the left for Win Lyle. Ball on the ground, kick away, kick is perfect. And Auburn leads Alabama 17 to 10 with 5.58 left in the third quarter. On the ensuing kickoff, Gene Jelks faced the wrath of the fired-up Auburn special teams. Here's the kick by Von Weil to Jelks. Jelks at the two-yard line, hits up the middle. Jelks is really belted as he crosses the 15 and gets out to the 16. Alabama needed a score or big play to quiet the roaring Tiger crowd, but they would not get it on this drive. Alabama's eight out of 13 on third down. Turner's at fullback, Classic at tailback, motion by the tight end, Lamont Russell, a fake by Hollingsworth, rolling to his left and shooting a pass back over the middle, passes incomplete. 
John Wiley covering Lamont Russell. And Alabama third down and three, and they'll have to punt. Pat Dye's defense had dominated most of the third quarter. Now, it was time for the offense to take center stage. The setback is Danley. Danley got the call, and he's got five yards, ten yards, and barrels out to the 30-yard line, close to a first down. Lee Osmond threw a cross-body block into him and upended him, and they'll say that he went down about a half a yard short of a first down. With Danley's running and Slack's passing, the Tigers began a march toward the Alabama goal. By the end of the quarter, they had reached Crimson Tide territory. But both sides realized that with 15 minutes left, the real game had just begun. The first minutes of the fourth quarter would be crucial. Here's a look at your statistics through three quarters as we await the snap of the football to initiate the fourth quarter of play. Auburn has outpassed Alabama 245 yards to 235. Auburn has outrushed Alabama 86 yards to 60. Total offense, Auburn 331, Bama 295. And Charlie, the time of possession has evened up a good bit. Alabama 23 minutes and Auburn 21. Auburn scoring 10 points in the third period of play to take the lead at 17 to 10. And now for that all-important fourth quarter, how many times in the last nine years have we seen this game go down to the fourth quarter of play? And nobody expected it to be anything less this time, and that's exactly what it's going to be. Motion by the wide receiver, Taylor. Slack, play fake, sets up in the cul-de-sac, and fires out in the flat. Ace Rice got it for close to a first down, down to the Bama 33-yard line. Covered by John Mangum, Alexander Wright jumped up, Pull that ball down out of the air, and he's very close to a first down at the Bama 33. It is a first down, says referee Al Ford. So Auburn picks up 14, 15 yards on second down. Alabama is showing blitz as Slack is going to run the toss sweep to Danley. Sprints through a little seam, broke a tackle, 30, 25, 20. Still on his feet to the 15 and on to the 13-yard line. Stacy Danley just sprinted through a little seam, found a little patch of daylight and he rambles down to the Bama 13-yard line where Hammond and McCants make the tackle. A gain of 20 yards by Stacy Danley. Toss sweep to the near side. Some good blocking over there by pulling guards and by the fullback, James Joseph, or either Alex Strong. I'm not sure which one, but one of them made a crunching block on the outside. Stacy Danley just keeping those legs pumping, and he broke through some tackles. The pounding by Danley put the tied defense on its heels so the Tigers dealt it a changeup. Second and nine at the Bama 12. One running back is Lectron Williams behind Reggie Slack. He'll toss sweep, Williams to the short side. He's at the 10, he's at the five, he's in! Touchdown, Auburn! Darrell Williams, the block thrown by Chris Gray. Auburn 23, Alabama 10. Rob Selby and Chris Gray carved out a gaping hole in Alabama's left side. With William Speed, there was little the Crimson Tide secondary could do to stop him. The drive was Auburn's finest of the day and couldn't have come at a better time. 13 plays, 80 yards, and it consumed 5 minutes, 50 seconds on the clock, with freshman Darrell Williams' 12-yard run putting Auburn up 24 to 10. Down by 14 points, the Crimson Tide would have to go to the air. Here's the shotgun. Hollingsworth fires over the middle, pass intercepted, and then dropped by Darrell Crawford, but I believe they'll give Auburn possession, let's see. Should give Auburn possession, the ground made him fumble, Auburn's ball, I believe. I believe it's going to go to Auburn, yes it will. Well, they call him Carson, number 56. He's come on week by week to become an excellent linebacker. He admittedly said he was shaken, his confidence was shaken after the Tennessee game, and uh, the, the rushing success.
success that Tennessee had, but he has become a fine linebacker, and the combo of Quentin Riggins and Daryl Crawford is exceptional. With the game on the verge of becoming a blowout, the character of the Alabama defense showed as it held the Tigers in check and forced a 31-yard field goal attempt by Wynn Lyle. Fourth down, and they'll need about three, but they'll forego the first down try for the field goal, and here's the snap to Dickinson. Ball is on the ground. Lyle's kick is perfect. Auburn 27, Alabama 10. With its undefeated season and national championship aspirations in serious jeopardy, the Crimson Tide responded like champions. Throwing on almost every play, Gary Hollingsworth suddenly had Alabama in scoring position. It's a first down for the Tide at the Auburn 15. And here rolling out, Hollingsworth, he's going to throw in the end zone. Bar Battle's got it. Touchdown in the far corner of the end zone. Just like that, Alabama's right back in it. Alabama wasting no time at all in scoring its first touchdown of the second half to pull back to within 10 points. It was 73 yards, seven plays in a minute and 45 seconds, a 15-yard pass to Marco Battle from Gary Hollingsworth, who during that drive was six out of seven for 64 yards operating from the shotgun. What had once looked like a runaway now had reverted into a gut-wrenching fight to the finish. So it's a third down and they'll need about a yard. The ball outside the Auburn 15. Here's Hollingsworth with 2.45 in the game. Going this time from the shotgun formation. Hollingsworth wants to throw. He fires over the middle. Pass is broken up incomplete. D'Amico Anderson hit the intended receiver, John Casmus, knocked the ball loose down at the three-yard line. Hard hit by D'Amico Anderson and Alabama in desperation now. Fourth down and a yard to go at the Auburn 16. 2.39 left in the ball game. Anderson, a good lick on the receiver, Casmus, and Casmus coughed it up. Alabama's got a decision to make. They're evidently going for it, but they've got to get a field goal and a touchdown. So they're going for the touchdown first. All right, Auburn with a five-man rush. Eye formation in the backfield, up the middle. Fullback hit, broke away, and he got his first down, Martin Houston, on a good second effort into the 10 and maybe the 9-yard line. Well, Martin Houston was hit behind the line of scrimmage. No gain, but he kept those legs driving and churning, and he picked up the first down before Quentin Riggins brought him down at the Auburn 9. The Crimson Tide was battling Auburn and the clock. When fourth down came again, this time Alabama opted for the field goal. This will be a 24-yard try slide angle to the left. Walls is the holder. The ball is on the ground. Doyle's kick is away. It is true. And it is 27 to 20. Through 62 yards in 14 plays in three minutes and 10 seconds. A 23-yard field goal by Philip Doyle, and now it's 27 to 20 with a minute 49 to play. What a ball game. Everyone knew it would be an onside kick, but who would get the luck of the bounce? He tees it up just inside the far hash mark, and Auburn has 10 men up inside their, the Alabama 45 and around midfield. There's the kick. It's a bouncer. It's loose. And Auburn, I believe, is going to come up with it. Yes, Auburn got it. Backup quarterback Frank McIntosh was the man of the hour. Put in the game for his good hands, he came up with a big play for the Tigers. Looking to run the clock, Auburn turned to Stacy Danley, who has made a career out of beating Alabama. One running back is Danley. Slack, waiting for the snap from Hudson. Reggie, 
with a long snap count, gives it up the middle to Danley, sprints through a hole, Danley broke a tackle, broke another tackle, he's all the way down to the Bama 20-yard line for another first down. Danley would not quit, would not be denied, broke the initial containment, got through another hole, broke another tackle, and just belly rolled basically down to the Bama 20. Osmond and Thomas will be credited with the tackle, but Bama is calling another timeout with a minute 29 left. Danley's heroics gave Wynn Lyle an opportunity to close the door on Alabama and become Auburn's leading all-time field goal kicker. Angle to the left, the ball will be placed down on the near side hash mark by Dickinson. There's the kick, kick is away, kick is good! Auburn 30, Alabama 20. Thirty-three seconds to go. Let the celebrating begin. Auburn would beat Alabama for the fourth year in a row. The seniors had never lost to the Crimson Tide. Third down and ten for Hollingsworth. Hollingsworth out of the shotgun is going to throw long. Looking for Sanderson, knocked down and intercepted. Intercepted Dennis by Wallace. Dennis Wallace. And this one, my friends, is history. With this dramatic 30 to 20 victory, Auburn won a share of its third consecutive SEC title. But for the 85,000 fans in attendance, all they'll remember is that on December 2nd, 1989, they were there when Auburn defeated Alabama at Jordan-Hare, the first time ever. First of all, I want to make a presentation. I want to present Coach Dow with the game ball. Listen, man. Tonight's what our program's all about. I want you to I want you to think about it and let it sink in deep. This is the reason we work in the summertime in January and February and the spring. This is the reason we push you beyond what you think you can do to experience moments like this. Ain't no easy way in life, and it wasn't easy out there tonight, but you were prepared for the task at hand. Every one of you players, I mean, ain't no way, ain't no way, for, I, ain't, I ain't smart enough to tell you how I feel about you. I mean, and, and because, I mean, it's family, every one of you. I mean, you know it. Sure, I'd like to be 12, 11 and old and, you know, not, but I'm going to tell you something. I wouldn't swap this year for any year that I've been at Auburn. I wouldn't swap it, men, because I've watched you struggle and I've watched you wrestle with them angels and, 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 but I watched you grow up and become men. I watched you become men. It's time, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember me standing right here and telling you when you became one that you'd know it? I mean, you know it now. It don't make any difference who's carrying the ball. It don't make any difference who's catching it, who's rushing the pass, or who's making the tackles, as long as you've got a blue jersey on.
plan was to go out, play football, execute, take it to them, not turn the ball over. We felt like if we did that, then the big plays would come. And we had a lot of big plays today to help us pull this one out. We weren't thinking about SEC championship. We weren't thinking about them winning national championship. We just wanted to win the state championship. And that was more important to us than anything we've done this year. Oh, it's a great feeling, you know, one that you can carry with the rest of your life. Sit down by the fireplace when you're about seven and tell your grandkids you never lost to Alabama. You won or shared three conference titles in a row. It was a great feeling, you know, something you really just, you can't even explain it. You can't even come close to explaining it. And, and Uh, I knew that when a defender knocked you out of bounds, you can still come in and try to make a play. You know, we go over there in our team meetings a lot, you know. If the defender knock you out, you come back in and try to make a play. I knew that, so I knew I had a good chance of trying to make a catch. This one's bigger than the other ones for us because, uh, you know, it's here and there, and there was so much to do. We had to leave town last night, you know, y'all said. That. And I can't imagine that, this little little old town, we had to get out of it to, to, to be able to sleep. But, uh, Did you, know, you sleep? Not, not, not much. <laughs> not much. None of us slept a whole lot.